Jesus is everlastingly committed. Not only is he going to take responsibility, but he is committed. I really think all of these things, as we look at Jesus, how he loves us as an everlasting father, friend, if you frequently battle anxiety, really all of these things are the cure. Preaching these things to your heart, preaching these things to your head. If I have an everlasting provider, if I have an everlasting protector, an everlasting head, if I have an everlastingly tender one, and one who is everlastingly committed to me, what on earth do I have to worry about? That's how you attack anxiety. With all of this, he's committed to us. Just memorize this verse. John 14, 18. If Jesus says something, he means it. I will not leave you as orphans. What a promise. I will not leave you as orphans. This is the night before he's killed. I will not do that. I will come to you. Do you know that? That's his heart for you, Christian? I'm not going to leave you as orphans. Now, why does he use the term orphans? You, only become an orf you don't become an orphan through your father abandoning you. Technically, you become an orphan through your father dying. So why does Jesus say that his love for them is like a father? He uses that. And he says, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. He's promising them, when you see me taken away to be killed, when you see me as your everlasting father, that promise, you see me killed, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'm coming back. I've told you three times, I know you still don't get it, but I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. And so we have the same promise to us that Jesus has gone back to heaven, sitting at the right hand of God the Father, and he promises you, if your faith is in Jesus, I will not leave you as orphans. Preach that into your heart until you sing for joy until your anxieties start to be battled, until your anxieties ultimately melt away as you are fixed on the promises of Jesus. In, in the book of Hebrews, he says the same thing. I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's how committed he is to you. Ain't going to be no orphan. I'll never leave you or forsake you. Matthew 28, 29, when he institutes the Lord's Supper, He gives them the cup, he gives them the bread, tells them to do it in remembrance of him, that this cup represents the new covenant in his blood. He is making a new covenant between God and man by shedding his blood in our place to bring us into a right standing with God. After he institutes that, he says, I have long desired, or in the midst of this meal, he tells them, I've long desired to eat this meal with you. For I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. That's covenantal language. Jesus is in one sense saying, I'm not going to party until I make you perfect. I'm not going to drink of the fruit of this vine until I drink it new with you in the kingdom of heaven. What he means is, like when we say, I'm going to get this done if it kills me. I'll take an oath. I'll take a vow. I'm not going to even eat food until I make this happen. That's what Jesus is doing in the institution of the Lord's Supper. So when we come to the table and take the bread and take the cup, it should be a remembrance of what Jesus has done on the cross 
to redeem us, and it should also be a reminder, a renewal in our minds and in our hearts of the covenant that we have with Jesus, and that he has said, I'm not going to do this again until I do it with you and the kingdom of heaven. That's commitment. That's how Jesus is committed to you. Jesus is like an everlasting father to us by being an everlasting provider, by being an everlasting protector, head, everlastingly tender, and everlastingly committed to us. And so he says, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. And I will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. That's commitment. Friends, embrace this Jesus as he is revealed in the scriptures. He'll provide for you. He'll protect you. He'll take responsibility for you. He'll not break you. And he will never leave you or forsake you. How can you know that you belong to him? You repent and believe the gospel. Believe the good news of what Jesus has done to save sinners. Trust in his life, death, resurrection in your place. If you turn from your sin to Jesus, you have the promise that the Lord God declares you righteous. He puts your sin as far as the east is from the west. He adopts you into his family. He gives you himself in the Holy Spirit. You repent and believe the gospel. You can be assured Jesus is all these things for you. And he'll never stop. All who trust in him will never be put to shame. 